Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, it is late right now. Uh, both my girls are asleep, so I thought I'd do a quick little video for you guys, I'm telling you guys how I deal with, uh, somebody, well, let me back up. Somebody actually asked me on my channel recently how I deal with leaving the supplies out for my daughter who, if you're new to my channel, is almost four. She'll be four in November. So, <clears throat> How do I deal with leaving all her art supplies out and making sure she doesn't like write on the walls and you know things like that and just it doesn't get crazy right and then uh so I thought I'd talk about that and then I also thought I would just show you guys what she did today uh like what she's currently working on and just show you guys what kind of things she's into currently and maybe give you guys some ideas if you're a stay-at-home mom from an early age uh I kind of just told her that we don't write on walls I don't know Maybe I just got lucky she actually listened. <laughs> now, she doesn't listen to everything I tell her to do, but uh, that is one area where she does listen. Now, keep in mind that very early on, I kind of painted my house white. Uh, and I did that kind of on purpose because, number one, I like the, the color white. But uh, also, it was also for uh, a, another good reason, which was that I knew that I had kids and I knew that if she were to hap happen to write on my wall or, or on our wall or just whatever, you know, things happen, it wouldn't be that big of a deal because I could just get some white paint and paint right over it. <laughs> I'm gonna give you guys, I mean, I mean I've, I've already kind of given you guys a tour before in another video and I can link that down below, but let me just show you guys. This is her area. The type of things that she kind of currently has is just kind of like some there's some more feathers here a lot of stickers more paint clay uh more colors i think in here is just more paint um let's see we have some shells uh some glitter glue back there some beads some glitter glue in here there's just some wooden uh i don't know pieces some sparkly things <laughs> some glitter a lot of wooden beads now things like this i don't give her access to um, and i sh but i do give her access to them but i will show you how i do it so this is something i don't just like i don't leave this entire thing out not because i don't trust her but just because i don't know the shelf goes you know it's up high and, and can't have access to everything <laughs> i use these con these uh containers these are just glass containers from my kitchen this is just jelly <laughs> and I washed it out, cleaned it, put it in the dishwasher and I reuse them. I try to stay away from plastic. I just feel like it's wasteful for me to throw away all these plastic containers that I already have. Um, I mean, I don't know, what am I supposed to do with these plastic containers? I already have them. I do like, like the, some of them, like for example, I like these. Uh, they pop up really easy so my daughter can open them. So I do really like those and they close really easily. They're airtight, but uh, there's, you know, other options like this is a mason jar from pasta sauce. And this is just better. So this is what I started to incorporate now instead of buying plastic containers. But I've had these forever and I'm just not going to throw them away because I think that's kind of being wasteful. So anyways, I try to stick with glass. So this is just old glass containers that I have for my kitchen. So then we just have some, you know, regular stamps and things like that. Some more of these do a dots, just like beads and things like that are in here. Now this is just chalk and she does have access to all this chalk. And this is like just, you know, manipulatives, uh, kinetic sand, uh, more clay, clay, clay. Um, and then just some, you know, coloring paper and books and all kinds of stuff. She has access to all that. She has access, these are empty. She has access to all this. This is just more natural materials, pine cones and whatnot. Uh, over here, I think more natural materials. Just more pine cones in here. Uh, these are just empty egg, egg cartons. In here, we got some cards. And the reason I have these cards is because there are some Spanish cards in there somewhere. I don't actually sit down and plan like lesson plans. I One thing I do do is go through the, the uh, cards with her, the Spanish cards, because I speak Spanish and I want her to learn to speak Spanish. And it actually kind of helped me because my Spanish is not perfect. So, And she has a bunch of other stuff here 
that this always stays out most of the time. Now, this is always changing because I change this up on a, I would say on a weekly basis. Now, the way I, I give her access to things like this uh, that I don't want all over the floor is I put them in a tray like this and I just give her access to a few. Uh, and she can do whatever she wants with them. So currently she's working on like a kind of a nature thing. We've kind of been talking about, you know, outdoor stuff a lot. And so uh, she found this stick. And all she's doing is putting glue on it. And, glue, and you know, gluing stuff, whatever she wants on it. As you can kind of see. And that's what she's currently working on. And she's really proud of it. So we've been leaving that out for her. And then here's another one that she's working on. And she's painting this one, and hopefully you guys can see that. So that's another one she's working on. And then she found this really cool leaf that she's really proud of. And she painted it, and we thought it was really cool. And she's, she says she's not done with it. She's gluing some glitter on there. And so I leave things like this for her. And this tray is, a, is always changing as well. So this is one way that she has access to these little parts. And then she found all these leaves, and this is, you know, something that she she's been collecting, again with the pine cones. And then over here, somebody recently asked me, what do we do with contact paper? We do a lot of different things with contact paper, but this is one example of something that we did with contact paper. Uh, and she just likes to get two pieces of contact paper, and she'll put different things in between them. And here she did just basically feathers. So if you just get yourself a little tray like this, if you're scared you know, that your child might just get all, you don't want to leave everything out, let's say, but you do want to give them a little bit of access to stuff. You can get yourself trays like this that you can, you know, put different things in and that helps. Uh, I have one here from an old, I believe Melissa and Doug toy. I don't even know what this, what toy this was, but um, it's just a tray. It's a great tray. Uh, I don't even think we own the toy that kind of came with this. I have no idea where I got this tray from, but the cool thing about this tray is that it has all these compartments and I use this all the time because I can put different things in them and then I can leave it out here. So that's another way you can leave out, uh, you know, colors, crayons, um, small parts that you want. Your, you don't want your ch child to have access to them all the time, but you want them to have access to them sometimes. So back to what I was talking about in here. I love these types of trays. Here's another one. This is I just got at Home Goods and it was on clearance. And then I have another one there that I really like. And then here is another one. This is another cool like wood one. And they're not only do they look nice, uh, but they're useful. For me, it was always important for my daughter to have access to her art supplies because I like the idea of her whenever she feels inclined to just go and sit at her art desk and just you know draw paint it was always a great good feeling when i saw her just respecting her materials and you know having fun from the beginning i always kind of had an art area for my daughter lyric there she always had some sort of table or desk where she was able to be creative and explore and express herself. And it was basically her area. Now, not everybody has room in their house for like a whole entire room dedicated for to an art area. So if you don't have access to a whole nother room, what you can do is you can just set up an art area in a little like nook in your house, a little corner somewhere. Uh, you don't have to have a desk as big as mine. You can even get one of those small desks from Ikea. You can even get them used because there's a lot of people that sell them up, sell them on Craigslist. So it doesn't have to be new and preferably not new because that way if they get paint on it, you're not going to like freak out because <laughs> it's already used. So you could do that. Number two is the area that you set up for them should be inviting. It's a place, it's a place that even you yourself would want to be. A lot of times kids want to be around you. So uh, set them up somewhere where they're near you. That way you could monitor them when you're giving them access to art supplies that you haven't in the past. So uh, number three is be prepared. And what I mean by that is cover the play area or the art area. Uh, so what I used to do is I would put down a drop cloth, 
of some sort. You can go to Home Depot and get one of those painter's cloth. You can use a shower curtain, a shower liner, a tablecloth, anything you want uh, big enough. Uh, you could put it under their desk. You can just put it on the floor. There's so many different things you can use. Uh, but basically, put something down if you're nervous about getting, you know, paint on the floor or something like that, or any kind of uh, art materials on the floor. Uh, so be prepared. That's number two, three, I don't know. <laughs> if you do have an outside area and you're not ready to leave out art supplies, you know, on a, on a desk for your kid, take it outside. You can even leave art supplies outside if you don't live in a rainy area. Uh, I had a, my friend of mine that used to put one of those wooden crates that you can get at Michael's and she screwed them into or nailed them into her wooden fence and she kept all the art supplies outside and that was pretty cool. Of course, she didn't live in a rainy area, but um, anyways, you can set them up outside, have a, a table out there for them. Uh, you could do all kinds of things outside. Start with materials that are basic. If you've never left art materials out for your kids, like scissors, uh, you know, like those toddler scissors, uh, paper, uh, colors, washable colors, washable markers, things like that. Like I know for me, it's important. I was important for me to teach Lyric to be thoughtful and the materials that she uses and not be wasteful. So I don't give her access to the entire box of beads. I just give her some access to some of the beads <laughs> by putting them in those trays that I showed you guys. And the next thing is, if you're still not comfortable, you can always use cardboard like boxes like this or any kind of box, like a wooden box or whatever, and just put all the art materials that you want them to use for the day in something like this so that way you can transport it, you know, from their desk or to outside or wherever, and then you can easily put it away when they're done. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful. Uh, any other thing that you guys maybe want to know, just ask me down below and I'll definitely try to answer any questions. So I will see you guys on the next video and I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a good night. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.